Welcome to the Be It Till You See It podcast, where we talk about taking messy action, knowing that perfect is boring. I'm Lisa Logan, Pilates instructor and fitness business coach. I've trained thousands of people around the world, and the number one thing I see stopping people from achieving anything is self-doubt. My friends, action brings clarity, and it's the antidote to fear. Each week, my guests will bring bold, executable, intrinsic, and targeted steps that you can use to put yourself first and be it till you see it. It's a practice, not a perfect. Let's get started. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Are you excited? I am. <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay. This is all part of it. Hi. Leave it in. <laughs> We're leaving it in. We're leaving it in. Uh, Hello, listeners. Welcome back to the Be It Till You See It interview recap, where my co-host in life, Brad, and I are going to dig into the profound conversation I had with Rob Mag in our last episode. If you haven't yet listened to that interview, feel free to pause this now and go back to listen to that one and then come back and join us. What you can't see, everyone, is Brad telling me to slow down. I'm, I'm actually, I'm, we are we are currently already at double time. You don't need to speed this up. Well, you actually, so yeah, that's true. This is a podcast you can bring down to 1.0. Um, anyways, thank you, Brad. I'm a fast talker, everyone, and that is one thing you'll learn about me. So first, Brad, we had an audience question to respond to, didn't we? Or space. More space. Yes. <laughs> yes, dear. Yes, Leslie. We did have an audience question. Okay. Well, what's the question? Oh, me. Okay. <laughs> oh, me. All right, everyone. This is real. Just so you know, we leave it all in. Um, welcome to working with us, actually, which leads me into this question, which is, Brad, when did we start working together? We got this question in a DM on the Be It Pod Instagram, and um, people wanted to know if the person writing wanted to know if it was before or after we were dating. Before or after what? Did we start working together before or after we started dating? Did we start working together before or after we started dating? Such a complicated question, only because our the window of us actually dating and not dating was quite long and maybe not a clear line. Then I broke my leg, and then that was after we were officially together. We still weren't working together, though. Yeah, but I built a website for you right out of the gate. Right, but right out of the gate, we got together because I broke my leg. And then you made the website. So we were dating. We were officially dating when you you did not build a website for me before you committed. No. That I remember. I'm pretty sure that wouldn't have happened. Would no. never have happened. <laughs> so and even then you built so you built a website for me, but that was not working with me. That was like showing off. Um, it was kind of, it was it was kind of a little bit showing off. I think that's fair to say. <laughs> Uh, also, too, <laughs> also, too, I think that um, your I, I I knew it was something that I could do to win you over even more. So, yeah, showing off. But it was something that I was already doing. I was building websites. Yeah. So it was a very like normal thing for me to build another website. Yeah. Um, we, we all, we all, we have dogs, y'all. You may hear a bark in the background. There's three of them. If you've got a dog, we love to know what your dog is like. I agree. I think, um, you know, you, you already had a business in building websites because you're building websites for your band. So it wasn't like you learned how to build the website. It was something you already did. Yeah. And it, uh, I already knew I was going to marry you. So you building me a website was just a perk. <laughs> um, <laughs> you didn't know that, but I did. Um, I think... Uh, it was pretty organic you doing other website stuff for me. You built me many websites before we got married, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but you and I didn't actually officially like work together. I think maybe the retreats were when we finally were doing more projects together. It's really hard. It was everything. This is the cool thing when y'all we'll get into it as we talk about Rob's um, points, but like, Everything kind of led after the website, then that led to something that led to my, my try at a membership. I, I think the first time we worked together was our wedding. 
Oh, you are right. We project managed the heck out of that wedding. Well, Brad did. I just checked things off. <laughs> but that was the first time that we, we like, you know, try to tackle a project as a team. Hey, yeah. buddy, August. That's definitely not going to work. Um, so, but, but I think we, we had, we had a goal and we essentially broke down the tasks and we used the project management tool and we, we fucking nailed it. It was oh, such yeah. a cool wedding. Y'all, we planned a wedding in four months in LA and six weeks to the wedding, we even lost the venue and we still like slayed. There's only one thing that we messed up at our own wedding. And yeah. that was because it was not in the project management tool, which was who is going to bring the wedding license to the wedding. <laughs> but yeah, I think that was the first actual thing we worked I, together. I, on. I think. And, and the thing was, it was actually really easy. Yeah. To do that as a team. And so it was very organic when we finally were like tackling work projects as a team, even though I, you know, like you were, I was kind of treating the stuff more of, except for the treats where you're traveling, like the, any of the work stuff until I formally came on full time. I was treating it like a client where yeah. you only got a little bit of time, you know, and then eventually I got rid of all those clients and then it was just when we started working together as a team. Yeah, no, the, um, the, you're right. The wedding was definitely where we worked together as a team. And that was the, the first real step. It also made us realize like how good we could do that. So to answer this amazing question of when did we start working together? Was it before or after we were dating? It was after we were dating. It was when we were engaged. I think we got married in 2015. Yes, we got married so, in 2015. That's, oh, fascinating. Anyways, <laughs> we never kind of remember when we got married. So we'll get there. All right. So thank you for that question. You can send in your questions to the Be It Pod on Instagram. So, um, all right. Before we get into our next part, we do some takeaways. I just want to say, I, um, you may or you may not know, like you may be sitting there going, LL, like, thank you for the podcast, but I don't even know how to make time for myself to be it and how to prioritize that. And I, and I, I really feel like for me, there are times in my life where I actually don't know the answer. Like I don't know what I want to do. Um, and the practice of showing up for myself is actually the most helpful way to do that because when you connect more to yourself then you can connect more to your goals to others to anything right so i want to offer you all a free class at onlinepilatesclasses.com slash b-e-i-t so onlinepilatesclasses.com slash be it get a free class from me take as many times as you want notice how showing up for yourself for 30 minutes I would love you to do it multiple times a week, but even once a week allows you to practice prioritizing yourself and your time in your life. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Why don't we jump into kind of talking about last week's or the last pod's uh, conversation with Rob Mack that you had. Um, I really enjoyed the interview. If you haven't had a chance to hear it yet, feel free to pause this now, jump back one episode, take a listen to uh, the great combo that, uh, that Rob and Leslie had together. Um, they, uh, they talked about a whole host of things, uh, but first Rob, uh, is an Ivy league, uh, educated positive psychology expert. Uh, he's a celebrated happiness coach. He's also an executive coach and an author. Uh, and I found the conversation really, um, actually kind of shocking because he came right out of the gate, um, talking about suicide. Uh, so we're going to talk just a little bit about suicide here. Um, and we wanted to also tell you that if, uh, you know, if you are, if, have ever considered, uh, anything when it comes to taking your own life, uh, there is help available to you, um, in the United States. And I want to say abroad because they have a 1-800 number. You can call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. Uh, and they are saying that we can all help prevent suicide. Uh, the Lifeline provides 24-7 free and confidential support for people in distress, uh, prevention and crisis resources for you and for your loved ones, and uh, best practices for professionals. Um, they have a 1-800 uh, a number that you can call 1-800-273-8255, 1-800-273-8255. Uh, 
Um, they also have chat support right on the site, and you can find that at suicidepreventionlifeline.org. Um, so that said, uh, when Rob was talking about uh, his experience with uh, considering suicide, um, and it was right out of the gate, I was I didn't really expect that. I had no idea that you know, as a happiness coach, that that was <laughs> something he was. Uh, that's where he was coming from. Uh, and, uh, um, uh, well, I mean, you talked yeah. to him, so. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I totally agree, Brad. I mean, it is part of his story and it has really what made him who he is today. So I, I actually appreciate that he so willingly shares that story because I think it's, um, a topic that is often people don't talk about you know, and, or they avoid talking about, or they're ashamed of it. And he shares it in a way that really makes you realize that it can, it can be anybody. And so, um, please use that information should you need it or if a friend does. So our first, my, I want to go into, um, a takeaway that I had because it's, it's something that's really personal to me. Um, in the, in the interview with Rob, he talks about being okay with just seeing the first st step of a staircase and not seeing the whole staircase. So he talks about like moving to Miami and only just knowing that like he was going to move to Miami and not really what's going to happen next. And I love this because it's such a simple idea. It's like, oh yeah, let's just, just be okay with that first step. Just see the first step in a staircase, take messy action. Y'all, I'm a take messy action kind of person. I have been practicing this, like your mess is your message, everyone. I've been practicing messy action and just being okay with the first step. You should know something about me. When we watch The Crown, I will literally Google what happened in real life just so I can watch the whole crown knowing what is going to happen. So for the record, um, this is not the easiest thing for me that I practice, but it, I couldn't agree more with him. I think it's so important that we don't get hung up on having to have every step of a staircase planned out to what we're going to be before we go, like before we practice being it. And so I don't know, I, I wanted to like, I wanted to, I really wanted to bring that home because it is so simple and yet so hard and people rarely do it. They're like, okay, I have to have it all mapped out. And I don't know if this comes from like an American, like, okay, you go to high school, then you go to college, then you get this degree, then you do this thing. And like, I did all that stuff and I never even got a job with the degree that I have. So knowing all the steps of the staircase has yet to help me. Um, and I will say like this podcast, you know, we really had very few of the steps even thought through before we started it. Um, uh, my business, you know, I was really much like, okay, we're just going to do this right now and see what happens. And it no, I, I think, I think also there's a sense that, you know, you can't just wing it, right. You're not, you're not just like, no. you, you know, trying to like, like hope it to, to fruition, <laughs> right. There, you know, there are steps, there are actions, there are, uh, there is this bigger, picture that we are working from mm -hmm. we know where we want to go mm -hmm. uh right but the you know we know we know where the staircase goes to but we don't know all the steps but we don't know all Correct. the stairs in the staircase right yeah. so I, I think that uh, uh you know as long as you have this bigger picture your vision uh for what you want for your life then maybe you can only see two or three stairs ahead at a time even and that's like with goal planning and like you know methodically thinking ahead three six months whatever you know but you're still not seeing you know the grandiose you're not seeing the entire staircase and all of the steps 100 percent. thank you brad's always here to summarize my long-winded answers and here's i'm working on a course for y'all i'm really excited about it this part will be a free course where it's like knowing the vision, knowing where the staircase ends up, where the top of the stairs is, and then actually like taking the action of the first step, um, because that's where clarity comes through. You've got to take the action. So that really resonated with me. And if you find that very difficult because you really want to know every step in your staircase, I promise you it's so freeing to just know a first two and know where the staircase ends and have fun taking a step and see what happens. Yeah. I also think that, uh, you know, there, there is very, there are very few, um, um, even in science, right? There's very few times in life where you know exactly every step before you're going to take them. Yeah. Right. You know, you're exploring, you're experimenting, you're trial and error. Maybe you take a step up and realize that's the wrong step and you take a step back. Yeah. You know, so, you know, I, I think, I think for the type A personalities out there, uh, who, who know that they, 
they need to have everything in front of them before they even get started, you're actually doing yourself a disservice uh, because you don't necessarily know. Uh, you might get into something and then realize, I hate this. Oh. oh yeah, and that's so cool because guess what? Like, you can you can go back down the steps and start over, or you can or you can find a new staircase, like, or yeah. you can or there's like you can wind the staircase to the left, you know, which Rob yeah. talks about left turns, and that was a really fun part of the conversation. But anyways, we yeah. can talk about staircases for the rest of this episode. But yeah, Brad, right. I really I really liked your takeaway, so I want to dive into <laughs> so it. So after listening to uh, to the interview, I one of the thing I took away was was really I found really interesting is the idea of defining yourself mm-hmm. right and giving you you two were talking about giving yourself your own title yeah. and I thought it was really like at first I was like man eh, that's kind of silly you know uh, you know like I'm you know because I come from the startup world right so well more like a startup company of four and it's like well I'm the CEO then I'm the CEO then I'm the CFO then I'm the CTO right and it's like we can't, we're, it's, all four of us are doing all the work. Like it seems ridiculous to be like defining ourselves in that manner. Or like I'm sure you've gotten a business card from someone and you're like, right, they're the president of a company of one, like whatever, <laughs> right? And, and, I definitely felt that way when I was the CEO of my own companies. I was like, this is so lame. I'm the only person in it. <laughs> so that's that's where my head went to immediately. Uh, but as you two were talking about it, um, I, I thought, you know, it. Maybe defining yourself isn't necessarily like a job title defining yourself. Instead, it's a way to, uh, to, it, it is you, it's part of your elevator pitch to people. It's part of how you mm-hmm. describe yourself mm-hmm. and who you are and what you are. And I thought, well, this is, this is actually completely tantamount to like success. If you don't have, uh, a definition of yourself, you know, because, you are your very first client. Mm-hmm. Okay. You're selling yourself first. And, you know, you're, you know, so for example, uh, uh, if you say, well, I'm just a Pilates teacher. Yeah. Right. Like that's a tragic, so small. that's a tragic definition of yourself. I'm just a Pilates teacher. Right. At, because yeah, you, like you just said, so small, but also you're setting yourself up. Like you've ceilinged yourself right yeah. there. Yeah, where the staircase can't climb anywhere. I, 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 I really love that, Brad. You know, I also even you know going back to the CEO, all that stuff. Recently, we changed the titles of ourselves because we do have a team that's more. We're not. It's not just me. It's finally growing. Yeah. Yes. And when we changed it from me being the CEO to you being the CEO, even that definition switch changed how you show up in the business and how I show up in the business. Oh yeah. And so, but I, I, he defined himself right as a happiness coach. Like, so I mean like just right there, a, I'm like, I want to know more. And then also it really does help him filter like what he does and, and, and what he, what he says yes to based on that. And so the definition of yourself is so powerful because it can literally uplift you and like expand you or you could box yourself in and make yourself small. So I think I would I would challenge people. I love this takeaway. I would challenge you to to tell someone who you are. Like, what's your definition? Yeah. Tell us. And I'll listen. Yeah. T- tell us how you define yourself. Um, and you can just DM DM the pod uh, on Instagram. Uh, but but. I, I found it really uh, fun to think about your new definition of yourself, your new title, as it were, which is CPO. Oh, I know. I, I was like, ooh. Which What's title? a CPO? Well, and that's something I didn't even know was in existence, y'all. There, you, This is the thing. If you, First of all, if you don't define yourself, other people are going to define you, so you may as well come up with your own. Just side note. And then, um, but I, when we were doing this whole thing with our coach that time and I, she's like, yeah, Leslie, you are in charge of all the ideas and the art. And so you're the CPO. I was like, tell me more product. I'm the product officer. I'm the chief product officer. So, but, but that, that's, that's funny, but that, that's, oh, I'm a chief Pilates officer. The fun (laughs) part of it 
yeah, how you define yourself mm-hmm. is the chief Pilates officer of yeah. the company. Mm-hmm. And that's funny and mm-hmm. fun and, you know, exciting, yeah. you know, and yes, it still comes with responsibilities, mm-hmm. but you know, it's, it's obviously our play on words. Her CPO, she's the chief Pilates officer, chief Pilates officer, chief, chief, product chief, officer. chief positivity officer. Yeah. Chief, I, I mean, it's a, a chief pod officer right now. <laughs> Um, but, I, <laughs> I but I think I, I really think like it's the power of the words you say about yourself matter because you're here's the thing, your brain and your body are listening all the time. So if you go around telling people like Rob is, I'm the happiness coach, boom, like you start seeing all the different ways you can coach people on happiness. You can be happy, like you can search for happiness. But if you talk, go around talking about yourself as like, oh, I'm, I'm, I, I'm just a trainer or I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm just an assistant or I'm, I'm just, you know, working at this, I have a side hustle while I go to school. I'm just a student. That word just is terrible. And also you are limiting yourself. And so have, I think have fun coming up with your title. Yeah. I think so too. Isn't it Tom's the company where people can make their own job title up? Um, I want to say it was, uh, well, uh, uh, could it be Tom's as well. It could well. be Tom's. Also, I, I do know that there is like people who at Google, somebody made themselves the chief, like the chief positive chief happiness, happiness officer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, and he was appointed. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, Anyways, that's your homework. Okay. So now in every podcast, I like to ask um, our guests, like how uh, tips on how you can be it because y'all, it's not just about inspiration. Like you can get that anywhere. I want you to have transformation. I want you to really, truly like start to see yourself in the thing that you are wanting to do on this planet. And so Rob, hey, Rob actually like went to town. He gave us so many. So you've got to listen to all of them. But my favorite was journaling. And I, here's why. And we, we talked about this, I believe, in, in his podcast, which is like, I, my therapist told me I needed a journal. And just so you know, Brad knows this. I have like 17 beautiful journals and I don't write in any of them. I buy them. Who, if you're listening, raise your hand right now. But if you're driving, keep your hands on your wheel. Who, who buys journals? Because like their higher self is going to journal someday. That's me. And I keep them and I don't write anything in them. And so she's like, I want you to journal. The week later when I came back for therapy, she's like, how did the journaling go? And I'm like, so I don't actually know what you mean by journaling. Like, <laughs> is there a prompt I should be answering? Like, hello, like oh, recovering overachiever and perfectionist over on this end of the mic. So I do journal every single day. I do what's called morning pages. And there is, I'll talk about it a lot on this podcast because it's really, truly like, like changed my world. And it's, you do it first thing in the morning. So I've had people tell me, okay, I do it in the afternoon. I'm like, that's not morning pages. Like specifically says morning. And the idea is that you brain dump for three pages on a legal pad and you never read them again. So if you are someone who wants to read your thoughts later on, this is not for you. But if you are someone who is like, I hear you need a journal, I don't know how to do it, you can take the LL route, which is morning page all the way. Um, it's from the book, The Artist Way. So if you really need to know how it comes down, but I, I promise you having like getting your thoughts out of your head onto paper really does help clear the mind. Anyways, Brad, what was your favorite takeaway? I, so I love how like, tangible and like <laughs> physical the idea of journaling is mine was a little more like esoteric that's good so everyone's everyone's at a different kind of thing so the esoterics here you go brad's got one for you <laughs> rob, rob said something that i thought was really ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> and 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 i and the more i thought about it the more i thought the more i like it um he said be the happiness that you're chasing and I was like, come on, like, that's, how can, how does it even work, right? Like, you can't just be the happiness that you're chasing. And then I thought, well, that's really funny because it's perfectly applicable to our podcast of being it till you see it. <laughs> I love how you just missed that and it was like basically what I'm doing. <laughs> right but but I thought I thought like how how ridiculous to just like okay just do it just be it whatever just right? be it and but but what he but then he took a second and he he quantified it and he said he said you can you know the happiness that you're chasing is obviously that quote unquote happiness is in front of you mm-hmm. right like obviously that's where you quote unquote want to be someday mm-hmm. right and he said however if you can be 
in the now, if you can focus on the present moment and you can dwell on happiness in the present moment, then you can be the happiness that you are chasing right now. So you don't have to, you like have it. I, so that made me think of two things. First, it makes me think of the quote, be the change you want to see. Second, it makes me think of, um, of all that talk about being in the present. And a lot of people are always chasing the dream, chasing the thing like, oh, well, when I lose weight, then I'll be happier. When I have this job and I'll be happier. When I have this significant other, then I'll be happy. When I get that new lipstick, it's going to change my life. Like there's always these, like, there's always a, a next thing. And I agree. Like if you can actually be the happiness you wish to be in the future in your present moment, um, then you're not actually chasing anything. And instead, not only are you being until you see it, what, what, thanks Rob for that. <laughs> but, um, I think you're just going to end, like, you're going to see all the things around you that are already there supporting you on that journey that you're going to go on. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I think, I think that it's a, it's a fascinating idea mm -hmm. and I think that it's worth exploring in your own life. I think I'm going to try to do that tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> because if you, if you can, like, for example, uh, just sitting here in our new podcast space. I know it's so pretty. Enjoying the vibe that we created in here and this moment, you know, this, this time, uh, it's, I'm imagine that this was our life moving forward. I would, Love it. Yeah. It would be amazing. It is amazing. Right. Instead you know? of us like going, okay, how long is this going to take? We got to order that sushi before they close. Like we're actually like being, so like being the happiness, being the thing in the moment, it really does make, I think it also helps you expand time to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> we're getting metaphysical here. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, esoteric, <laughs> metaphysical, it's in the line. Um, Brad, I think that's a great takeaway. And I, you know what I love about you? Um, there's many things, everyone, and you'll get to know them, but he's the most curious person. He asks, like, if something, like, if something is said in a podcast that he hears, not just mine, but like others, and he is like, huh, I don't agree with that, or that's interesting, or how does it even work? He, like, goes down the rabbit hole of researching it, and I learn so many things, whereas I might go, no, that's cheese. <laughs> like, he's like, puts a question mark on it and like really goes through it. So it's really fun to, for that to, um, for you to be here because, um, otherwise we'll only do the things that are like tangible, strategic, like let's get into I, it. I must say that I find that ironic because usually our ro the roles are very reversed in that sense. Yeah. But and uh, I'm the action, the action taker. Go well, welcome to being in the chief yeah. Pilates pod officer room. <laughs> the roles are reversed. <laughs> I, well, I love it. Well, anyway, everyone and anyone listening to this, um, do us a favor and let us know what your favorite takeaways of, uh, Rob's podcast interview were. Um, you can screenshot this and post it in your stories and tag us. Also, if you have questions, um, that you want tag us to Rob answer, too. tag Rob back to, and if you have questions that you want us to answer, you can DM the be a pod, all that stuff, all the information's in the show notes below. Um, I just want to say thank you so much. Um, and I can't wait to hear how you use Rob's tips to change your life and be it till you see us see it. And I will see you next time. Thank you. Cheers. That's all I got for this episode of the Be It Till You See It podcast. One thing that would help both myself and future listeners is for you to rate the show and leave a review and follow or subscribe for free wherever you listen to your podcast. Also, make sure to introduce yourself over at the Be It Pod on Instagram. I would love to know more about you. Share this episode with whoever you think needs to hear it. Help us and others be it till you see it. Have an awesome day. Be It Till You See It is a production of As The Crows Fly Media. It's written, produced, filmed, and recorded by your host, Leslie Logan, and me, Brad Kroll. Kevin and Bell at Desenio handle all of our audio editing and some social media content. Our theme music is by Ali at Apex Production Music, and our branding by designer and artist Gianfranco Chilfi. Special thanks to our designer, Jaira Mondal, for creating all of our visuals, which you can't see because this is a podcast. 
and our digital producer, Jay Pedroso, for editing all the video each week so you can. And to Meredith Kroll for keeping us all on point and on time. <laughs>